Lord, praise him today. I have to bless his holy name because he's God. And all he wants from us is to live right and to praise his name. This morning when I woke up and I realized that I was alive, like a shock that I was alive. Nothing went wrong yesterday. But when I woke up this morning and I recognized that I'm alive, I said, let me give him some praise. So I, I lie back and I, I start to meditate and give him praise because I realized that my life is still in my body and I give him thanks for that. Don't you, don't, could you imagine how much people passed today last night? Some die of, of this or that. Suicide alone, over 300 people in America every day die from suicide. Troubled mind. But I thank God today that we as believers does not have the troubled mind that we wouldn't commit suicide. But we're gonna die someday. Or maybe some of us may be caught up in the air to meet him. What a joy that would be, alive. So I thank God for you that are here this morning. And I thank God for myself and Sister Gift who are willing to sit here to help with this program. I am just helping. If you are not here, I wouldn't be here. Oh, praise the Lord. So this morning, I want to present a subject maybe that some of you have never heard. After death, where would be the righteous man? Where would the righteous be after he's dead? Where would the wicked man, the unrighteous man be after he died? Have you ever sit and think about it? Well, I'm gonna give you some time this morning as believers, let's suppose when you go to bed tonight, you have given up the ghost. You have gone on some other side. Do you know where you will be going? You know, I was thinking about it just now. You may be hearing and fumbling to speak. It's because I put in my dental, I can't use my mouth properly. So I'm fighting to speak. I'm, I'm learning to speak again. So bear with me. I remember this morning, as I was thinking about this lesson, some of you may know Elder Virgil. I met him in the church a long, long time ago. He was one of my elders or <clears throat> and teachers. And Elder Virgil passed away a couple months ago, not too long. He was in the hospital. He was about 82 years old, 83, 83 years old, and he passed. Just got sick about three, four weeks and just wingle away. And one morning, while she was in the hospital, around 5.30, I was in a dream. And somebody came to me in the dream and said, right at this moment, just so, right at this moment, but the Virgil is gone. And they, they told me the time that he had passed away. And in the dream, I start hearing 
some bells ringing, you know, like Christmas bells. And it was coming from the side of my house. And the bells were ringing, tingling, tingling, tingling. But it was very sweet. And it was like in my driveway. And then I heard the bells start going up. It reached my, my window. Then I could hear it reach the house top. And I'm hearing the song, a sweet song going up to the heavens. And I heard the song until I didn't hear it anymore. And then the voice said to me, he's gone. He's gone into glory. But I never remember, forget the time that the, the, in the vision they told me that he had passed, but quarter to five. 15 minutes to five o'clock. And after the vision, I woke up. I didn't wake Sister Giff. But Sister Giff had told me if the hospital ever ring, call, because she had expect him to pass. She's not answering the phone. So it, what about either six o'clock or 6.30 in the morning, the phone rang. And she looked at the phone and she realized it was the hospital and she passed the phone to me. And the doctor came on the phone and said, your brother is gone. And he said the time, exactly the time that I was told in the dream. So he passed. And I heard the bells. And the bell was going up. And you will never forget that. And music. And music. Music was in the bells. Music was playing. Nice music. Really, really nice music was playing. And it just disappeared. So this morning, I have a lesson after death. Where would the righteous go? Where would the ungodly go? We know after death, you bury a man and his body decays in the earth. You come from the dust and you're going to return back to the dust. But there is something that cannot die. The soul of man. The spirit of man. Have you ever think about it? When you or I die, where would that soul go? So we know where the body goes. We know that worms will eat this body. But where would your soul go? If you know, are you preparing for that place where your soul will be? So today we'll be studying, we will go deep down into the spirit man. We have to know about ourselves. You cannot live here ignorantly. You know how much money you have in the bank. Some of you know how much houses you have. You know how much children you have. But something as your soul, 
do you know where it's going? If you drop today, I heard the bells was ringing. I heard the music was playing. And I know that Brother Virgil's soul was going upwards. I lived with him in my house for seven years. So I know the man. So I, I didn't expect anything different, but I didn't expect the Lord would have bring him or pass his soul by my house or pass his soul where he was living because the hospital is a very far place. So he was passed to do his last visit where he was living. So today, I really want to go down into the scripture to let us see when a man die, if he die righteously, where his soul will be going. The righteous soul and the ungodly soul not go to the same place. That I can tell you. So let's look at ourselves. Let's see where we are. And at the end of this life, what will to happen to us? So we want to turn to the book of Luke. And we want to hear Jesus speaking to the Jews. And Jesus was telling them about a story of two men. One was righteous and one was wicked or ungodly. And you know, I always hear that people does not come back from the grave and talk. I always hear that. But that's the truth. Jesus, who knows, who knows the truth, is telling us something about somebody or two men who died. And he was giving us the story of these two men. One, at, one was telling his story, and the next one was just there, very quietly. So let's turn to the book of Luke 16 and verse 19 and see where, what we can get out of the scriptures, what the scriptures can tell us. Don't doubt it. This has everything in it. If you want to know it, you got to start studying deep. You got to start going down with your spirit into the spiritual book. Because this book is spiritual. So when you go down with your spiritual self, you bring up spirituality from this book. You resurrect this book. Because it's spiritual. So let's go down into the scripture, Luke chapter 16 and verse 19, to hear the story of Jesus. And this is not fairy tales. Read, this is a gift. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously so every he's day. So telling the story of a rich man and then we're going to go to the poor man. The rich man lived very happily here on earth. Nothing wrong with that. But I wonder, wonder when he was living, if he was thinking about the soul. So let's go down and see. 
Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Oh, hallelujah. Which was laid at his gate full of sores. So another man. One was rich. One was very poor. <coughs> and one, the same poor guy was suffering. He had sore, <coughs> sorry, on all over his skin. Nothing again wrong with this if he knows where he's going. The most important thing here with these two men, do they ever sit and imagine after that what? Read it. Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So look at what's happening here. The man was so poor that he could not, maybe, I don't know. He was not getting dressing for all the sore on his feet and his legs and his, and his body. The, the sores was open and dogs came, <coughs> sorry, and interfere with those sores. I hope and trust he know where he's going after death because he's very close to death. I hope he's preparing for after death. Let's read. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. 22. Watch at 22. This is the story Jesus was giving about these two men. Jesus not telling lies. It is not fable. He was telling something that happens. 22. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Mm -hmm. The man died. The beggar. The poor guy. We didn't expect him to live too long. He died. His suffering is over from the flesh. But what happened to his spirit? <clears throat> what happened to the spirit man after death? Let's see. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> the body was not carried away into Abraham's bosom. His spirit, his soul was taken away. So let's get it again. The body died. The body was buried. But the inner man, which is called the soul or the spirit, let's hear what happened. Verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels. Stop right there. Is Jesus making this up? Is Jesus saying something that is not truth? Is Jesus teaching us fables? No! The Bible is saying here to myself and to you that the man died righteously and angels took his soul. I wonder if you hear what I just said. I wonder if you are looking at your own self. Let's suppose tomorrow something happens. Would God send angels S to the end? 
to take your soul? Read this again. Angels took the man's soul. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You may say to my, yourself, what is Brother Dave saying this morning? I want you to follow me deeply. I want you to come to a neutral mind. I want you to look at the scriptures very deeply. Jesus is telling us a story and a true story. What is Abraham bosom? Where is Abraham bosom? What is Jesus trying to show us? Let's see. Let's go to Matthew 8 and verse 7. Matthew chapter 8. Mm -mm. 8. Mm -hmm. oh, I am, I am. 8 and verse 10. ten. Matthew chapter 8. Listen to Jesus now. And verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. What Jesus heard? Jesus heard that this, there was an unbelieving man, he was not a Jew, who believes. This is what I want to put forth to you today. You have to believe. You have to trust Jesus. Jesus was shocked at this unbelieving man, faith. He couldn't believe this man that is not an Israelite has so much faith. So let's go down, verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. That is at his faith, at the man's faith. Look into yourself this morning. How much have you trust Jesus? I trust him. I trust his word. I doesn't care what Jack said, or what Harry said, or what Pastor John said, or what Pastor John said. I care what this said. When I read this, I believe it. Read it. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. At the man's faith. Read it. And said it to them that followed. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Really? Verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west. Be careful. Be careful, believers. <laughs> Be careful, believers. If you are hearing my voice, Today is the day of salvation. Be careful. Time is running <laughs> out. East. People are coming from the east and from the west. Let's see what happened. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom oh, of heaven. Hallelujah. You ask me what is Abraham bosom? The Bible is saying, it's telling us now what is Abraham bosom? A place of safety. 
in the kingdom of God. It is symbolizing the kingdom of God. Read that again for me. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east mm -hmm. and west mm -hmm. and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac. These are men that die. These are men that are gone. They're gone on the other side. Their soul is somewhere else. In the kingdom. Their spirit. Of, 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 I, don't, I don't know the word to use. Ascended. Ascended. And gone. Into heaven. Let's read. And Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. You see what it, you see where the beggar is? The beggar spirit or the beggar soul is in the kingdom of God. Don't, don't, don't say that to me. The millennium is not here as yet. So it cannot be in that kingdom. We are still here. There's only one kingdom of heaven that is above. So there is where a man that is righteous, when he dies, his spirit is ascended. That's where, when I heard the morning, the songs were singing. And the bells were ringing. And when the virgin spirit was ascending up into glory. Look at verse 12. You got to be very careful with verse 12. We're going to study that next week. Read. Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to keep on this this morning. Oh, hallelujah. So let's just jump back to 22 in verse 16. I'm just confirming to you that the beggar spirit is not floating around in the earth. Or floating around under heaven or floating around under the earth. The, spe the beggar spirit went to rest. Read it. Luke, again. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. A place of safety. A place of rest. A place where pain is not, is not anymore. Read. The rich man also died and was buried. What's the difference? What's the difference? But next week, we're going to touch that. It never tells you that Lazarus was buried. We know that he was buried. But this, this berry here is more than berry for the rich man. We're going to go into it deep next week. And I don't want you to be like the rich man just died and was buried. Look at what happened to Lazarus. Angels came down. Just like when a man get baptized, you know. The Bible said many angels come down and dance and sing for one person that give their life to Christ. It's the same thing that is happening here. A man died with Christ. That mean he's saved and his spirit is gone above. 
How you know that, Brother Giff? How you know that? This is just a parable. That's what they say. All right. Turn to me to Luke 23. Write down the scripture. We are in school today. You have to know where your soul is going. Luke 23 and verse 4. Luke 23 and verse 43. Where am I? <clears throat> okay. Luke 23 and verse 17. Sorry. Luke 23, verse 17. Four of nothing. Go, go, to, go to 15. Luke chapter 23, verse 15. Oh, sorry. It's 43. Luke 23, 43. Thank you. But we're going to take from 41. I was, in, I, was in, I was not in Luke 23. Go to 41. Luke chapter 23, verse 41. And we need justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds. <laughs> that's that's sure. one of the thief. That's one of the thief on the cross is speaking. The righteous thief. So listen, Sister Gifu. <clears throat> and we in... Take it from 40. From verse 40, Luke chapter 23. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, mm -hmm. seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Mm -hmm. You're wicked. That's what he said. He's telling him. You condemning Jesus, a wicked man like you? Read it. Verse 41. And we indeed justly, mm -hmm. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. That is the righteous thief talking. We receive the right reward of our deed. He's telling the real thief that. Read it. But this man has done nothing amiss. Hallelujah. Read it. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus... Lord, watch this now. Watch this. The righteous thief talking. You know, we have that chance right now. The righteous thief is talking to Jesus. Let's hear what he told Jesus. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, mm -hmm. remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Did you hear that? This is the righteous thief. He knows that everything was not righteous with him. He knows that he didn't give his life to Jesus. So right on the cross, he's telling Jesus, Jesus, you know everything is not right with me. I'm saying that to you, wheresoever you are today, you're listening my voice. You're not talking to me. You are talking to the inner man, the spirit. You are talking to the father above who sent his son. And I want you to read it again and listen to this thief talking to Jesus. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Remember me when you come into thy kingdom. He didn't understand the thing properly. But he's telling him, look, 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 my man. Forgive me for my sins. That when you come, I'll be with you. He didn't understand how the thing worked properly. 
But you and I understand how this works. We have to get it right here. And he continued. Jesus, Jesus looked at him. With all the pain and the suffering Jesus was, was, was going through, he come to save that which was lost. Listen, Jesus. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. He's answering the thief. Verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Take your time with this. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. Jesus said, I heard you. I heard you, sir. I recognize you, sir. I am saying today to have that talk with Jesus. I'm saying today to look at yourself to see if you are ready to dead. And listen what Jesus said. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Jesus Christ, what a lucky man. What a blessed man. The man gets saved on the cross. Because he looked forward for it. He understand what was salvation. Verily, verily I say unto you, today thou shalt be with me where I go. Where my spirit go, you going to be there too. Paradise. So our spirit ends up somewhere. And Jesus is saying to this man, your spirit going to be with me in paradise. Not floating about the earth. Some minister said they don't know where your spirit is going. But Brother Gift is telling you today what the Bible says. Jesus is saying, you're going to be with me in paradise. Okay, but again, what's paradise? Where is paradise? Paradise is not in heaven. <laughs> Maybe under the earth, we need the sea. So Jesus told him, and Jesus, that's why I like Jesus, you know. Jesus doesn't change as us. Jesus is saying to the man, your soul going to be with me where my soul goes today, your soul is going to be. Not floating around this earth. So let's see where paradise is. 2 Corinthians 12, Let the Bible speak. I doesn't care about your doctrine. I really doesn't. I care about this. I only go what what, what this says. The Bible. The Bible. So Second Corinthians twelve and verse two. Let's see what is paradise, where paradise is. If paradise is just floating around here. Look at verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I know a man in Christ. We studied this last week. Paul, was this man in Christ? Read it. I know a man in Christ. <laughs> above 14 years ago. Himself he's speaking about. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. 
God know it. Only God knows. He doesn't even not sure what happened to him. But let's read. That's not the subject today. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So he's saying that he knows a man that was alive was caught up into the third heavens. And that was him. If you follow the reading, but that's not our study today. The man was caught up into the third heaven. Let's go down. Second Corinthians chapter two, chapter twelve, verse three. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. Oh, hallelujah. Read verse four. Verse four. How that he was caught up into paradise. <laughs> and did you hear this? Did you hear this? Did you hear what the Bible just said? The man was caught up into paradise. The same verse here is saying the man was caught up into the third heavens. So paradise is in the third heavens. Paradise is not floating around somewhere on this earth. According to what the Bible is saying that paradise is in the third heavens. I want you to go back to verse 2 again for me and then come back to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. We are dealing with the spirit world today. Go with me deep. Go with me deep. Go with God me deep know it. God know it. Such an one caught up to the third heavens. So the man, Paul is saying that, listen, this man caught up into the third heaven. And verse 4 is telling us where paradise is. Read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. <clears throat> How that he was caught up into paradise. Read it. And heard unspeakable words. <laughs> With, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So what happens here is that when a man dies, he's caught up into paradise according to what Jesus told the thief. So what, I, what I'm trying to show you here, paradise is in the third heavens. And Paul is saying when he was caught up into paradise alive, in the spirit, not in the body, he heard noises unspeakable. unspeakable. I'm just trying to prove to myself and to you when you die, make sure that you are caught up into, that your spirit is ascended that God sent the angels, angels, S at the end, according to Luke, to take your spirit or your soul and carry it into paradise. Don't let that spirit go nowhere else. There is somewhere else. There is somewhere else that your spirit can go. We can talk about that next week. Don't let your spirit go nowhere else. There's only two places. The righteous man spirit goes into paradise, goes into the third heavens. Oh, hallelujah. All right, Brother Giff, you almost convinced me. So let's read. Let's study. Let's study. Study is the important thing. Let's go to Revelation 6. 
and verse 9. You almost convinced me, Brother Giff, that when a man, when a righteous man dies, he's not floating around the earth. Let's see what I'm saying. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Before I go there, I want to show you something. Where the man that was speaking, where he was. Before I speak to you, I want to show you where John was. Go to John, Revelation 1 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. I, John, who also am your brother. Mm -mm. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. This is out of my scripture, but I just want to show you where John was when he was talking. I want to prove my point. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, <clears throat> and behold, mm -hmm. a door was opened in heaven. Hallelujah! John is talking. He's talking what he see, and he's talking what he heard. Read it. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking to me. Angels around him. Angels. Spiritual world. Spiritual world. Let's get into that, brethren. Spiritual world. They don't talk so far. Read it. Which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Hallelujah! So the angel is telling John, that was on Patmos lying down. Come up hither. I want you to come up to heaven. And John immediately was in the spirit. If you go to the next verse. Verse 2. The Revelation. Uh -uh. You don't have to go there. Let's jump back here. I don't want you to miss this. So John is in the spirit in heaven. Read verse 9. 7. Chapter. 6 verse 9. Sorry. 6. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 9. Verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal. Mm hmm that's the angel. I saw under the altar. This is John speaking. John is telling us what he saw in heaven. And this cannot be lie. He was there. Read. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal... I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which this they is held. The Bible. So John was in heaven and he saw your mother, my sister, Brother Smart. All the elders that pass, Pastor Jarrett, Brother Virgil, and all you know that live righteously. Go back to verse 9. Revelation chapter 6. John is saying he see them. Read. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, mm -hmm. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. You see what happened? Some of them died in persecution. Some of them just died. But John is saying that he saw the souls under the altar. What does that mean 
I'm not sure. But somewhere, the Bible called it Abraham Buzama. Safety. Here are these souls in heaven, not floating around the earth, but in somewhere that they had peace and joy. Read it. Revelation. Listen, listen what these souls are saying now. Listen. Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Mm -hmm. They're talking to Jesus. Holy and true. You see, how they, you, you see what they, you see how these souls praising him? They were praising him from when they were here. So they're still giving him praise now. Read Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see? They're asking Jesus a, a very important question. What about the people who kill us? What about the people who persecute us? What about the people who take our lives? How long? How long are they going to be free? But these spirits or souls are under the altar. They are in a place of safety. Read. Revelation chapter 6 verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it was said unto them. Listen this now. Listen this. Listen this. This is not the, this is not the kingdom on earth. Listen what the souls, listen what Jesus is saying to them. Verse 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. <laughs> My God, say right this is again. Don't hustle it. So when a man dies, a righteous man die, he gone to rest. Jesus is saying, rest for a little season. Don't give yourself no headache. I'm going to take care of them guys who kill you, who persecute you. I'm going to take care of the ungodly man. Rest. But he is in a place of rest. Read. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. Look at the word, a season. For a time. For a time, read. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they will should be fulfilled. Hallelujah. You know the time going to come. The Roman kingdom is going to be back again. And if you're alive, you would be killed. So Jesus is saying, cool it, cool it, rest. Until your fellow brethren, when they are killed, something going to happen after that. But the point I'm making, where are these people? They're under the altar of God. And the altar is in heaven. Let's. So they are resting. Let's see Revelation 7 and verse 9. Read it. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this I beheld. And That's John. John is in heaven. So he's looking around and seeing what's going on. He's in a strange place. But he's not in heaven in the body. He's in heaven in the spirit. He is sent to heaven in the spirit. Because the Bible said, come up hither. And he said he was in the spirit. This is something that, that we are not taught this is something that we are getting down deep into. You're not 
just a man. You are built a little lower than the angel. You are built to do spiritual things. You can appear and disappear because you are spirit man. So John is in the spirit in heaven. Read. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I beheld and lo, a multitude. You see? What it is? What it is? John is saying he saw a multitude in heaven. Read. Which no man could number. Mm -hmm. That's people who are saved from, from the beginning of this time. You can't check them. These are the souls that he saw. As they opened doors, he's seeing different things. Read. Which no man could number mm -hmm. of all nations and kindreds and people and thongs stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed. Hallelujah. This is in heaven. The kingdom is not yet, yet on earth. And he saw this multitude before the throne. Read. But this is what they're saying. Listen. Before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Yes. Thanking God for salvation in heaven. Read. Revelation chapter 7, verse 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Hallelujah! So our brethren are up there rejoicing for salvation. You and I have to be careful. When we die, where we are going. Read. Revelation chapter 7, verse 12, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom. Where are you? I'm sorry. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 7, verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne mm -hmm. on their faces and worshipped God. You notice all the verses reading. The first is reading about kindred, nation. Different type of people. And then verse 11 brought in the angels. So now the angels is around these same people that are saved in heaven. Look at verse 11 again. Take your time and read it. Revelation chapter 7, verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the God throne. throne. And let's see what they're doing. And about the, the elders and the four beasts. Mm -hmm. So now the elders are there. Men that gone on. The apostles. Jeremiah, Isaiah, great men. They are standing before the throne. Read. And fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. So here is angels. Here is souls that is before the throne of God in heaven, worshiping God. Remember, I'm not teaching that man is up there in the flesh. Man's spirit is up there. Man's soul is up there. And I always said, this is where it came from. So it's logically for you, for you to go back there. 
It's not a hard thing. The soul of man came from heaven. Only when it reached into man, it start getting wicked or righteous. But when it came from heaven, it was a righteous soul. It's a part of God. So nothing wrong if it goes back there. Look at verse 13. Revelation chapter 7, verse 12 and 13, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered. One of the elders, not angel. One of the elders. This could be Peter, James, John, somebody else. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Watch this, 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? Listen this well. And whence came they? Listen this well. Even there, the elders that were there is asking John a very important question. Where all these people come from? Where they came from? Let's hear the answer. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto them, and I said unto him, John speaking, Sir, thou knowest. He said, John is telling him now, how I don't know that? I'm not from up here. That's what John is telling the elder, the soul that is there. How would I know that? Read it. And he said unto me, listen this well. These are they which came out of great tribulation mm -hmm. and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood important, of the Lamb. Important, important, brethren. The elder is telling John how these make it up there because they had washed their robe in the blood of the Lamb important for me and you today that our robes are washed in the blood of the lamb that means we are cleansed that means we are sanctified that means we are set apart before we did so the elder is answering john read revelation chapter 7 verse 15 Therefore are they before the throne of God. You see where they, where they are? These elders, these souls are before the throne of God. These souls. So don't go away not knowing where you are going to. If you are righteous, you will be ending up in heaven or paradise before the throne of God. If you are unrighteous, next week we're going to deal with that. Many people said, when you're dead, you're done until the judgment day. That's not truth. I think I'm going to stop here. I have many more scripts here where we are. Okay, first, let me finish 15. Finish 15. Revelation chapter 7, verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So look what's happening here. The souls of our brethren that are dead and gone are before the throne of God and they are worshiping just as the angels. I'm just asking myself 
And I'm asking you today to get yourself ready for this excursion. You'll be escorted into heaven, your soul, and you'll be escorted here after to spend some time in the... This has nothing to do with the thousand year reign. This is not going to abolish the, ten, the, 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 the thousand year reign. We're going to come back here, as the scripture said, 10,000 upon 10,000 of us are going to leave glory and come back right here to reign on earth. So I'm begging you, I'm begging myself, prepare to meet your God, that you would be before the throne of God, worshiping him in the spirit and in truth. Thank you in Jesus' name.